Here it is, the last day of my 31 films in 31 days. Here we're finishing strong with one of my favorite films of all time, The Sea Wolf. The film is an adaptation of a Jack London novel of the same name. After an accident, two survivors of a sunken ship, played by Ada Lupino and Alexander Knox, are taken aboard a ship called The Ghost. The ship is run by a ruthless skipper by the name of Wolf Larson, masterfully betrayed by Edward G. Robinson. Larson enjoys torturing his crew. One of the crewmen, played by John Garfield, feels it's time Larson had a taste of his own medicine. That's the best way I can describe the plot without giving too much away. Robinson, as I said before, is fantastic. He again shows off how versatile of an actor he was. Larson is easily Robinson's most complex and interesting character. His demeanor is so sinister and unpredictable, you never know what he's going to do next. And when he does do something, it's always despicable. Even though Robinson wasn't a very tall man, you feel the power his character holds. There are so many scenes where it's just Robinson watching over his crew, and it's enough to make you feel uneasy. The supporting cast does a great job too, but it's hard not to only focus on Robinson because he's so great. Barry Fitzgerald is the only other person who rivals Robinson's performance. He plays a real scoundrel named Cookie and has an evil laugh. The cinematography is haunting. The use of fog to complement the slow-moving ship makes it feel like, well, a ghost. Jesus, it took me five years to figure that one out. At a glance, it might seem like this is a horror film because of the abundance of fog in every scene and its foreboding atmosphere, but it never feels distracting. It just feels like they're blending genres. The director, Michael Curtiz, always had a talent for blending genres with films, and this is no exception. The score is fantastic. It varies from loud and boisterous to quiet and elegant. Even though it has large variations, it always feels appropriate and can easily be identified as one score to one movie. It's striking to me that this film isn't fondly remembered. Not only was it one of the biggest films of 1940, but according to the book The Warner Brothers Story, it was Warner Brothers' highest grossing film that year. It's a very intriguing story that doesn't follow a lot of traditional Hollywood techniques when telling a story. To me, there really is no main character. I think the ghost itself is the main character. Sure, people argue Alexander Knox is the main character because of his progression, but you spend an equal amount of time with everyone. So the argument of who's the main character is really up for debate. My favorite scene is when Alexander Knox is pushed to the edge by Barry Fitzgerald. Knox throughout most of the picture has been calm and collective, and has verbally expressed his disgust with Larson's ways. But after a long time of abuse, he reaches a tipping point and lashes out at Barry Fitzgerald. Robinson relishes the crumbling of Knox's humanity and eggs him on to kill Fitzgerald. He practically begs him to do it. This scene shows how vulgar his character is, and makes the audience realize that this man has no value for human life. He enjoys death as much as a child enjoys a candy bar. Someone once described this film as a film noir at sea, and yeah, that's pretty accurate. It has all the suspense and stylistic elements of a noir that make it stand out compared to all the other films that deal with voyages at sea. It gives it a unique spin that allows it to flourish as its own thing. For the longest time, this film wasn't available on DVD. It frustrated me so much that I wrote Warner Archive a letter asking if they'd ever release it. They told me it could be. Five months later, they finally released it on DVD and Blu-ray. I'd like to think I had something to do with it finally getting released. Hey, you know what I just realized? I bookended this thing with two John Garfield films. I started with four dollars and ended with the sea wolf. Funny how things work out like that. This is an exceptionally good film that I feel deserves to be seen by more people. It's phenomenally acted, exceptionally shot, cleverly written, and has an unforgettable score. What more could you ask for from a movie? If there was one movie out of the 31 I reviewed I could recommend the most, I'd recommend the sea wolf.